Hey, it's Jessica Namasa with WTF Health, and joining me right now, I have Rodrigo Martinez. He is the Chief Marketing and Design Officer for Veritas Genetics. Hi. Rodrigo, so good to have you here. I know, good to see you. Good to see you. So it's an, it's been an exciting time recently in the whole genetics world. A lot of stuff going on with 23andMe and with like the, the price of genomes going down. So give me, a, I guess, a summary of where we're at as far as genomics is concerned. It's becoming more and more widespread, but tell me what you're seeing. Yeah, no, it's you're absolutely right. It's a fascinating space. Um, so there are a couple of things happening. Okay. One is uh, companies like 23andMe that are based on genotyping technology basically opened the market over the last decade. Okay. And they've done an incredible job of getting awareness uh, you know, in, in the general population and people know about tests, et cetera. Um, but we're now we see a trend with the price of whole genome sequencing dropping. Now we see a move from genotyping technology to sequencing technology, right? Because if a test, uh, if a, if a test is the same price and it can offer a lot more information, right. then of course now the consumers are much more educated. And like, oh well, yeah, that makes sense, right? So one, we're seeing the shift from genotyping to sequencing. Okay. Right? And what's and so the difference is that it's just it's an entire it's the entire sequence, right? Or is there more to it than that? Yeah, that's exactly right. So when uh, in a genotyping technology, you are looking at very specific points of a genome. Uh, uh, it's about less than half of one percent. Oh wow! Okay. And that, it's that small and, of a percentage. Yeah, it's okay. a very small amount. And also, you are asking for questions for which you already know the answers to, which is, do you have this? Do you not have this? Do you have this? Do you not have this? Right. In sequencing, uh, you're basically sequencing the whole genome, so it's basically six billion letters, uh, and most of what you're sequencing, we don't know what it means. So you can learn at the beginning when you sequence your genome a number of things, happy to go into that, but then it's what happens after. So the next decade, we're basically going to learn more than anything we know today. Right. So we can go back and look at your genome in six months, nine months, and 12 months, and learn more and more and more. Okay, I love how you explain this. It's like, do you have this yes or no, yes or no, yes or no? And now we have this the ability with the whole genome sequencing and to do that, and, and it's becoming more and more cost effective. So I remember it was just a few years ago where everybody was like, the thousand dollar genome, this is it, people. And it was like, this was gonna just open the market up and it was gonna be crazy. And now it's like, we were talking about this a little earlier, like a hundred dollar genome. Is that like, how far are we from that? Um, well, look, there's uh, estimates uh, between three and five years. I think we're closer to the three year mark. Okay. Uh, we, you know, Veritas did a little experiment. I'm happy to, to, to share some of the data. Yeah. Uh, in November, we dropped the price from 9.99 to 1.99. And, and the 1.99, uh, you know, the, the reason for that is because many people in the, in the consumer are used to Oh yeah, genetic test costs between nine ninety nine, uh, nine hundred ninety nine dollars. Uh, sorry, nine ninety nine dollars or one ninety nine. Okay. So there's there's sort of an understanding. Right. right? So we said we're going to drop our price to one ninety nine for the first one thousand orders, okay. and what and we're going to sell in in forty eight hours. And so we did. And how long do you think it took to sell those thousand genomes? I would say if it were, I was just going to guess, it'd be like I don't know, four hours or so. Like yeah, that. that's exactly right. So in less than six hours, we sold out. It was the largest number of genomes sold to consumers in a short period of time ever, right? By the time that we did this out in Boston, by the time the California orders were coming in, we were already halfway through. Wow. We were running out, right? That's awesome. So this is a signal of what is to come, right? As price drops down, yeah, consumer amazing. adoption is coming up, both on the consumer side and the clinician side, right? So, so physicians are also starting to use whole genome sequencing as a way to know why it might be some of the things that I need to keep an eye for preventively, right? Okay. So uh, clinics like like Mayo Clinic or Duke or Innova uh, are starting to offer now whole genome sequencing uh, as part of a suite of, 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 of preventive services. I want to talk a little bit about this because what's interesting to me, it's like, it's in this, it, it seems like no matter what conference I'm at and like whatever part of the health innovation world, if it's the health IT conferences and they're talking about EMR data or for it, you know, something that's like more on the on the farther innovation end, like an exponential medicine, and we're talking about the future of medicine. Yeah. Everybody's talking about patient data and patients having access to that data. And like also like I, I mean for me it's part like part of the curiosity factor here is like are patients ready to have this information? Like, I mean, I think, you know, some patients are, are more educated than others, right? Yeah. And so are I mean generally from what you guys are seeing, I mean and, you know, of course, with, with the pricing of what you guys are, where you guys are at right now, just because of, of the limitations for it, or even like when you, when you drop down to 199 like, 
as more and more consumers are able to adapt this, get their genome sequenced, are they yeah. going to know what to do with this? Yeah, that's a great question. So let me break it apart. Yeah. Um, there are a series of studies that have shown, some done at Brigham and Women's, uh, Robert Greene and, and company, uh, some, some very well-run studies that basically have proven that, in general, people do not go and jump off the bridge with data, right? Okay. With certain results. Like, there's a general understanding. Uh, of course, there's much work to be done to make yeah. sure that it's clear and understanding. I mean, understanding. you think like, okay, like if it shows like I may have a propensity toward a certain kind of cancer, yeah. but it's like, I'm like a lay person reading this, not, right. not an right. oncologist. Am I creating all sorts of That's, angst for myself? Right. And like, you know, calling my doctor unnecessarily. Like, I mean, how are you guys addressing Absolutely. that? That's so, what I'm wondering about. Right. The false so, positive, I guess. Exactly. Or, so one, um, and, and people don't want really the data. People want the insights. Right. right? Okay. Like, I don't, how many no, of your enough. how many of your X-rays have you asked to receive and keep at your home? Like nobody ever asked. I them, have them Did framed, you get your Rodrigo. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. Like, what you want to know is, give me the insight and what can I do about right. it? Right. So, one of the things and one of the reasons that I'm uh, a chief marketing and design officer is because we need to design great experiences for people to engage with this information. Okay. And one of those is. Not, yeah, a, like? not a paper report that is 500 pages long that you need three PhDs, a doctor, and a genetic counselor to understand, <laughs> right? Like, no, this needs to be user-friendly. So we have a, a very well-thought report online. You look at your results. It's categorized by red, yellow, gray. The red are things that you need to talk to your doctor about, like, now, wow. right? Okay. And there's actionability is the center of it. Right. We include uh, 170 medications and your, pharmac like, your drug sensitivities to those, and we also classify them. But these are really important. These are not so important, right? So we need to give uh, uh, the, the consumers the engagement tools yeah. for them to not just understand, but know, oh, and what do I do now? Right. right. No, so, and you're right. I mean, I did a I did a microbiome test because right. I'm a dork, and yeah. so I'm like, oh my god, this is so cool. And my results came in, and I was like, plotted on this like chatter, like a scatter chart, and I'm like, what I'm I way doing? over here. I'm like, what do I do now? Yeah. Like, I don't even know what to do. That's but and, that, and you're right. Like, I could have cared less about the data. Right. I really just wanted to know yeah. what do I do. Yeah. And so, how are you guys? How, like, what, how are you doing this? Because this is sensitive. I mean, and it's kind of uncharted territory in the sense yeah. that it's like whole genome, yeah. and there is a lot of information. There's yeah. a lot of oh, things yeah. to tell you. So, Absolutely. how are you making this? consumable and not scary? How are you making yeah. this helpful and not hurtful? How yeah. are you How yeah. are you taking care of the consumer in that? Yeah. So one is design. We're designing touch points yeah. that speak human and don't speak clinician, <laughs> right? Well, that's the number one right, right there. Right. <laughs> and I, I don't need to give you 500 pages of information. You want to know, start by telling me what are the five most important things? And then of those, tell me what can I do? Then, okay, now I'm ready to listen to the other 12 important things, right. right? So how do you phase the information? How do you give it? Now, where we are going, so today we have a, a well-designed report online and you can search your results, you can print, you can email this to your partner or your family, doctor, whatever. Right. Now, where we're going is you should be able to grab your phone and, you know, when you are not feeling all about something, say, hey, is there something in my genome about, you know, uh, sensitivity to certain foods or I just took a medication and I'm, I'm having this red like and you should be able to get a re an answer back that comes from the insights from your genome but you don't need the whole report right. you need the answer for what you are looking for right, right? so we've we've done this in a demo that we did with Alexa uh, a couple oh, of years ago cool. where we actually connected Alexa to our backend system and I'm having a conversation with George Church and Alexa and you ask things like hey you know am I allergic to Tylenol and you're not really allergic, but that's how people would ask the question. Right. And then Alexa translates that to, are you a fast metabolizer or a slow metabolizer of Tylenol? Goes, gets the answer back, okay. and then says, actually, you are a fast metabolizer. Well, you should talk to your doctor about adjusting your dose. Right? That's Very the well. answer that's you, what want. you want. Right. So it should be device agnostic. It should be any interface that you use, your phone, whichever phone at home, Alexa, Google, whatever it is. Right. You should be able to query your own genome when you need it and get the information that you need at that point, whether it's diet related or exercise related or, you know, something about a medication. Yeah. And that's where we're going. Okay. Now, the question then is security and privacy. I was just going to say, because if I'm asking these questions of my genome, 
Right. I wonder who else wants to ask these questions of my genome. And that's where it's like, you know, you can start to get into a little bit of trouble, as we have seen with other genetics companies recently, yeah. is who else is querying this data? Right. And there's a lot of, I mean, especially lately, you know, the patient ownership of data, portability of data, and then right. the fact that it's like the privacy part of it. So like, Absolutely. how do you address that? Yeah. Like, what do you, like, how do you ensure that it's like, no, my genome is not being queried by my insurance company? Great, great question. So. Um, two, two sides to that. One is uh, some companies like, like Veritas are HIPAA compliant and follow us all these series of regulations to how to treat this uh, data privately, securely, you know, from A to Z, right? Uh, but having said that, of course, there's always this question like, well, yeah, but an insurance company you know, might find my data, or what if somebody yeah, what if, emails yeah. it? Like, we're still dealing with faxes in your top hospital yeah. in the country, right? Yes, right. And so, <laughs> I mean, let's, you know. Um, and then the question is, which which consumers often have, was like, well, what if my health insurance were to learn something about my, my condition? Like, okay, and, the con and, and then, you know, sometimes I ask this question, I say, like, well, what is the concern? Well, the concern is that they might know that I'm not as healthy as I'm saying I am, right, and, and my raise rate. my premium, right, right, right for right. example. Right. And then I think an interesting answer is, well, if a consumer, if your health insurance company wants to find out how healthy or unhealthy you are, the most immediate, fast and cheap way to do it is to go and look at your Facebook photos and look at your size, you know, the size of your, uh, of your belt and what you eat in your photos on Instagram. And they can immediately tell you if you should be put in a higher risk, uh, you know, curve. You kind of right? got a point there. <laughs> right? So now, having said that, I'm sort of half joking, but... Obviously, we we no, do not. There is connect, a lot to be said about that, right? We do not connect our consumers' data to any third parties' databases. For example, we give them. Uh, we're mostly health focused, right. Veritas is, uh, but but we also give some ancestry information. But we don't connect it to any other database because okay. part of the issue has come on the ancestry side. There's the benefit of connecting yours to somebody else, to somebody else, to somebody else, and then third parties get access to that. Right. And that's partly been the some problem. of the the, the, the situations that I've had before. Okay. So you need to decide as a consumer, one, do I go with a company that follows all the HIPAA, all the regulations, and what those are, so it's, a, it's a messy world, but it's good <laughs> to know. Two, uh, do they connect my data to any other third parties? And three, what are the, the consents that you're giving them uh, as a customer, as a consumer, what to do with that data, right? right? So do you want to participate in research or not? Right. We ask that of every one of our consumers, right? A high percentage of them say yes, sure. and under which conditions, and you know they can decide that. So, you know, as the price goes down, I mean, do you like? I mean, it's interesting because it's like there's so many of these solutions that we talk about. It's like, oh well, these are the solutions for the most affluent, right? And it's like as the price comes down, this has propensity to be a solution that can be adopted broad Absolutely. scale, right? Absolutely. But there's also at the same time like health literacy, particularly mm -hmm. among a socioeconomic class that is not as well off tends to there, there tends to be a, a line in the sand there as well so how do you like i mean i guess what part of the burden of like educating people on how to use this and like yeah. like you had even said i love the idea of asking alexa like hey do i have am i you know i, I love that that question of asking am i allergic to this or is there anything in my genome for that but how right. do you even teach what is how do you genome? teach people yeah <laughs> Like, what kinds of questions yeah. to ask it? Like, yeah. how do you, yeah. I mean, how are you going to tackle that as, as the price starts to drop? So, it's so a great question. Uh, I mean, we're a startup. I so, know. there's only so much we can grasp. So, it's 23 and me, and they're but, selling uh, in Target, you know? I mean, which is kind of scary in some regards. Like, I saw that there, and I was a little bit like, hmm, I yeah. wonder if all the Target shoppers are really ready for some of this stuff. Yeah. What do you think? Fair enough. So, a uh, couple of things. As much as we can, we try to do also our job in helping educate, explain, right? So, for example, We've created what I think are the most comprehensive and beautiful videos of DNA. What is DNA? What is a genome? How are genes passed on, etc.? Yeah. And we partnered with a four-time Emmy Award winner producer to create these videos. Okay. These are not your, you know, horrible online eh, DNA is. Yeah, no, right. It's like they're actually beautifully produced, right? Why? Because the more people we need to engage people, right. and if they don't understand what this is and what the important is, it's much harder, right? Yeah. We're not in the business of selling tests. We don't want to make a buck selling another test. There are enough companies out there doing that, and they provide it's a commodity and they point. provide infotainment, <laughs> and that's fine, right? We in, in order for the, the genome is a, it's a completely different beast. It's what is your interest in it? How engaged are you with this? Because if you're not engaged from the beginning, 
once you have the information and you can do something with it, how likely are you to actually act upon it? Yeah. Right? I love this because the way you're looking at it is more... I mean, some of those other things that are out there, and they're good. I mean, it's all good. But it's like, it's looking at the past. Like, this is your ancestry. This is what, you know what I mean? Like, what, what has happened. Right. Whereas I feel like the way that you're talking about this is much more, how can I use this to my advantage for the future? That's exactly right. So okay. you I don't, you probably have not seen it. You're welcome. Actually, one of a little, <laughs> we have a little ad going on. We have a very, very, very small marketing budget. Um, I have not seen a single ad for you, so I have no idea. And, and But we do it very, very selectively. And one of them is actually a little gift that says, your DNA is much more than a map. Some companies are focused on your past. We're focused on your future. Okay. Like literally what you said. Oh like, my God. I'm like marketing gold. <laughs> and we know the value of having your genome sequences. You can learn a lot um, today, but, but you're going to learn more in six months and in 12 months and in 18 months because all the research that is being uh, generated, we can go look back and say, hey, you said that you were interested in oncology because your grandmother something, right? right? By the way, they just identified 20 more genes related to something, breast cancer, prostate cancer, whatever, right? Would you like us to go look and see if you have this? Because awesome. at that point, we already have your genome sequence. We can just right, go, just go to back that. to it. And that's, I think, the thing I, I keep forgetting myself is that new work is, like, we don't understand the genome fully yet. Oh, and it's like gosh. new work we, is being uncovered, like, daily. About we probably what, understand 1%. Yeah. Maybe. Which is like, I mean, no. Right. So once it's done, you can go back and query it over and over and over again. And it's cool that you guys are being yeah. proactive about that. Yeah. Very cool. So oh man, Rodrigo, this is like such an exciting time for this. I'm like, I'm so excited to have you stop by and talk about this. I am like really, I mean, no, truly, I'm really excited about this space. And I think there's so much opportunity for yeah. it. And like, yeah. just, you know, I mean, just building understanding about like not only what we as healthcare know about the genome, but then as we as health consumers, That's how exactly we use right. it, like, there's just, it's exciting. And also because, you know, for example, one of the terms that, that has been talked a lot about is precision medicine, yeah. right? Well, there is no precision medicine if it doesn't work for you. Right. And it doesn't work for you if you don't know what you have in your genome. Right. For example, right? right. So there is no precision medicine without you sequencing your genome. Exactly. Right? So there's this incredible moment where we now can start to understand some of this data and act upon it. And this is going to help us prevent rather than come too late and treat. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. It's a thank pleasure you. to talk to you. I'm Jessica Namasa with WTF Health. Thanks so much for joining us.